In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the smallest RTX 4090 eGPU on the market. I mean, hands down, this thing is absolutely tiny when you compare it to others. This is the all new Morphine G1. And keep in mind, they do offer a couple different variants. They've got an RTX 4060, an RTX 4080, and of course the 4090, which is the one we're going to be taking a look at in this video. It's got 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And when it comes to the eGPU market, you know, we've seen a lot of the AMD stuff like the RX 6700 XT. There's a ton of them on the market, but I've been really hoping for an NVIDIA variant and I really wasn't expecting it to be this small. As you can see here, I mean, it just fits in your hand. Now, of course, it does have an external power supply, which isn't a huge external power supply either. And this does support USB 4 and Oculink. It actually comes with an Oculink module that you can install instead of USB 4. So you've got many different connection options with this eGPU. Inside of the box, along with the Morphine G1, we have an Oculink cable, USB 4 cable, 230 watt power supply, and this will deliver up to 85 watts out. The GPU itself with the RTX 4090 variant does pull around 150 watts. And of course, we've got our Oculink module here, and you will have to swap out the USB 4 module for Oculink if you wanna use it that way. But yeah, I mean, I do like the look of this thing. Again, it's super tiny. This will fit right in the bag. And this is something that I can definitely carry around with me for my handhelds and mini PCs. And it does offer some really great GPU performance. And one important thing to note here with this kind of form factor, they didn't just go and slam an RTX 4090 desktop edition in here. This is actually an RTX 4090 laptop variant inside of this unit. Taking a quick look at how to swap this out, it's actually pretty interesting. Comes with the tools you need, except for a Phillips head screwdriver. And we've got our module here. Out of the box, this came with the USB 4 module installed, and I'm gonna leave it there for now. But it's really easy to swap over to Oculink, and it does come with an I.O. plate, so it'll match up perfectly. Top off with four screws, we can pull the module out with three more screws. There's also a little cooling pad here that you'll put on the Oculink, but I've tested both ways. And the first thing we're gonna be doing here is USB 4 with a handheld. We're going to go with the ROG Ally X. And after we're done testing over USB 4 with the ROG Ally X, I'm going to move over to this little mini PC. It's the GMK Tech K11. It does have Oculink built in. And with Oculink, we're going to get a much faster connection. But setup with this thing is really easy. We've got our video out going over to our monitor from the eGPU. I've got power in from that 230 watt power supply. There's also a couple different fan modes here. There's a quiet. There's a balance and there's a performance. Now this doesn't change the wattage that it runs at. It just kind of changes that fan speed. But keep in mind, we will be in performance while doing all of the testing here. And uh, for the ROG Ally X, all we really need to do is just plug in a USB 4 cable. I've got a shorter one here. This isn't the one that came with it, but uh, it's one that I've used several times in the past. Give it a few seconds. It'll initialize. I've already installed the NVIDIA driver on the ROG Ally X. Now we're gonna get all of our video out of that eGPU, the RTX 4090. And now we can utilize that external GPU. And with this setup, it actually adds some extra IO to a handheld. We've got two full-size USB ports up front. So I've got a mouse and keyboard plugged right in there and I will move in a bit closer, but I wanna show you a little bit of performance the way it is. Here's Cyberpunk 2077. 1440p Ultra with DLSS set to balanced. And since this eGPU can put out 85 watts, it's given us more than enough to kind of go into dock mode with the ROG Ally X. And I've just got it set at a static 30 watt TDP. There's a little bit of a boost for two minutes, but we're kind of past that point. So that AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme should kind of flatline at 30 watts across the board. And moving in here, I wanted to show you that we are at Ultra, 1440p. And I'll just move it back over. With this setup, since it's over USB 4, I did need to add a little more DLSS than I'd wanted to with this. Now, if you were using Oculink, you actually can just go to quality with it, but we're at 1440 Ultra Balanced DLSS, no frame generation, and it's looking great here. Of course, we could enable DLSS frame generation and almost double the frame rate here, but I wanted to keep it just like it is to show you what it would do. And I'm actually pretty impressed by what this thing is doing over USB 4 on the ROG Ally X. 
and USB 4 should theoretically run at a maximum of 40 gigs. I'll tell you, it never does, and we'll take a look at that by the end of the video. If we were using Oculink, which we don't have on the ROG Ally X, we could be getting much more out of it with these same settings. With this handheld here, USB 4 is where it's at, and there are other handhelds on the market that have Oculink built in, which would net you much better performance with this external RTX 4090. But now I wanna move in a bit closer, show you exactly what's going on. Okay, so we're set up here with the ROG Ally X over USB Type-C with this external GPU. And as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. With this setup, I'm actually gonna be using Armory Crate and we're gonna go to manual mode, basically maximum performance. So a sustained 30 watt TDP on this APU with a boost up to 53, 43 for two minutes. So we're gonna to try to get as much CPU performance out of this system while it's all plugged in. And the eGPU is sending enough power. As you can see, we can go on up to that kind of dock mode setting there. And we've still got access to the built-in Radeon graphics, but instead of using that, we're gonna be using the RTX 4090, 16 gigs of VRAM G DDR6. And uh, so far, this thing's actually working pretty good. I wanna show you here from Furmark. Just go ahead and run this right over here. 150 watts on this thing. And I've actually seen it boost up to like 163 in some cases. But remember, with the profiles we have here, it's basically a fan profile. We'll spin up a bit faster in kind of performance mode just to keep it nice and chilly. But yeah, I mean, I've actually been doing a little bit of testing. It's working great here. But again, one thing to keep in mind here is the overall speed over USB Type-C. So basically, we can run this at PCIe X4 3.0 up to 40 gigs and usually we're around 30, maybe 28 to 32 on average with USB 4 and a good connection. I've done some testing here with Oculink and USB 4. We'll take a look at that later on in the video, but just note that, yeah, I mean, over Oculink, you're gonna get much better performance out of this eGPU. And unfortunately the ROG Ally X doesn't have Oculink, but still I wanted to get into some gaming here because it really does up the performance show you a couple more games running over USB 4 and then we're going to move over to Oculink and I saved some benchmarks for kind of a comparison just to show you the difference. This is Doom Eternal 1440p Ultra Nightmare with ray tracing on and we're at 100% resolution scale getting over 130 FPS on average and ray tracing with this game does look good. It's not a ton but you know all of the reflections off of uh, metals and everything like that do look really great. And I wanted to show you at least one more run in here. God of War Ragnarok 1440p Ultra with no DLSS. This was really impressive. I actually thought I would need to enable it a little bit. And uh, most of these newer games do have DLSS frame gen. I kind of wanted to leave it out here because with a powerful GPU like this, even with USB 4, it seems that we don't need it for a lot of this stuff. So obviously something like this can really up the gaming performance of a handheld, even just using USB 4. But now I want to move over to that mini PC with Oculink. And from there, I also ran some benchmarks, just kind of facing it off against USB 4. We're also going to be taking a look at real world connection speeds. So again, installing Oculink here is pretty easy, and I'm not exactly sure why they didn't just go with Oculink and USB 4 out of the box. It's a little weird, but I do like the way this thing is set up. And again, we're going to be using the GMK Tech K11 Mini PC, Oculink, and USB 4 up front. This has the AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS. So with the more powerful CPU and faster connection, we should see some really awesome performance out of the RTX 4090. Okay, so now that I've got everything connected to the mini PC, I've installed the drivers. It's up and running and it's working really well here over Oculing. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 8945HS and this system will do up to around 70 watts. 780M graphics, I've actually disabled them because we're just gonna be using that GeForce RTX 4090, 16 gigs of VRAM. And uh, just to show you, using Furmark here, we'll go ahead and run a stress test on the 4090. Right over here. You can see this jumps up to 150 watts. So just over external, 150 here, even over Oculink. And I wanna show you the big difference here between USB 4, Thunderbolt 4, and Oculink. I use this application, Kudazi, 
This is going to give us an idea of what kind of connection speed we have between the eGPU and the mini PC right now. I'm going to put this side by side with it connected over USB 4 just to show you how much faster Oculink really is. This application is coming really handy, especially when testing USB 4 cables because all of them aren't created equal. But as you can see, over on the left hand side, we've got the Oculink connection. Over the right hand side, we've got the USB 4 connection. And you can see this is in megabytes. On Oculink, we're right there at 60 to 63 gigs. Over on USB 4, we're anywhere from 26 up to 30. And of course, USB 4 should be 40. But I've mentioned that several times before, I average around 28 with USB 4. And obviously with an eGPU, you want the fastest connection possible to get the most performance. Now this really doesn't transfer over to synthetic benchmarks. Most of the time we're seeing around the same, but here's 3D Mark Steel Nomad with the eGPU over USB 4 on the ROG Ally X. We get a total score of 4,615. Average of 46.21 FPS, and if you see on that 8945HS over Oculink, we are up a bit here, coming in with a 4811, but we only gain 2 FPS over there. Remember, this is not indicative of real-world performance. These are synthetic benchmarks, but the next one we have here is 3D Mark Time Spy. USB 4 connection with the ROG Ally X, we got a 16,415. Graphic score 18,740. And if you take a look at Oculink, we did get a higher score coming in with an 18,483, but we do have a more powerful CPU here with that 8945HS. It's really the graphics score. You can see even with the synthetic, it did beat out USB 4. But when it comes down to it, getting into some real world gameplay, this is where Oculink really matters. Moving back over to Cyberpunk 2077, but this time we've got a more powerful CPU and we're connected over to Oculink. If you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that that RTX 4090 is pulling close to 150 watts. Our CPU is up to 60. We've got a much higher clock here with the 8945HS. And we're at 1440p using that ultra preset, getting around 93 FPS on average, which in my opinion is more than enough at 1440p. It looks great like this, but there's a lot more that we can get out of it. So right now we're at 1440p Ultra with DLSS frame gen on, getting over 140 FPS on average. So yeah, I mean, it really helps out. I know some people don't like frame gen, and I kind of do wish that we could backport multi-frame gen to something like this, because I've noticed that when using an eGPU like this over USB 4, I mean, we're not going to get the same kind of performance as we do over Oculink, but adding frame gen with USB 4 can make some games that just weren't playable at those ultra presets really playable, even though we've got that slower connection speed. Checking out Spider-Man 2, 1440p, very high settings with no DLSS, no frame gen. And in some cases, it does get really close to, you know, that 60 mark there. But for the most part, I mean, we're over and I never saw it go under. So adding a little bit of DLSS, maybe setting it to quality, will bring that up. Starfield was another game that I wanted to test here. We're at 1440 Ultra with DLSS set to balance, but we're not using frame gen. So yeah, it's pretty decent, but uh, again, just kind of like Spider-Man, in some cases it does go down to the mid and low 60s. But if you've played this game, you know, as soon as you hit up any of these cities, performance does tank. So during planet exploration, we're actually seeing averages in the mid 90s. And the final game we have here is Monster Hunter Wilds, 1440p ultra preset. And with that ultra preset, it does enable DLSS frame gen. Something we really can't avoid, uh, you know, the way the game is right now. With it off, it does give us mid 60s with this little setup here. But I'm sure there's going to be areas in this game where it will drop under 60. 
either way, I don't mind playing it like this. It does look good. And to tell you the truth, I've only been playing this on iGPUs. So, uh, you know, seeing the game look this good at 1440 is a bit impressive to me. Still not the best looking game out there, but uh, coming from an iGPU at low settings 720p to this really makes a huge difference. So yeah, overall, the Morphine G1 is a great performing all-in-one eGPU, and in fact, it's the most powerful all-in-one eGPU that we've tested so far. And I'm sure in the future, something's going to come along that'll trump this. But right now, that RTX 4090, even though it's a laptop variant in this form factor, does make for a really awesome setup, whether you want to run this on your handheld or a mini PC. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see another device tested with this eGPU. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Morphine G1, I'll leave links to their official website down below. And like always, thanks for watching.